You know, there was a time period, and really not all that long ago, where I was quite happy using Windows. And I will also admit that there was a time period back in college when I was a very happy Mac user. But since 2017, I have become a Linux user. And I have to say this, and this is kind of the point of the video for today, is that Linux has ruined me for other operating systems. And it's not even just the proprietary ones that I'm talking about. Really, it's all other operating systems. So today I want to talk about why that is. But before we do, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. So like I said at the beginning, there was a time period in my life, in fact, the vast majority of my life, where I was a perfectly happy Windows user. I started out with Windows 98. Well, I mean, I suppose technically I used earlier versions of Windows back in like elementary and middle school, but my personal computing at home started with Windows 98. I used Windows XP. I used Windows 7 and 8 and 10. You know, I was a Windows user, just like the vast majority of computer users out there. And even when I dabbled in Linux back in 2003, I eventually came right back to Windows. So I was a naive and oftentimes sheepish follower of the Windows way of life. And life was good, you know, I got through college that way, and it was all okay, but since 2017, I've switched to Linux, and like I said, it has ruined me for other operating systems. I've tried Windows again over the course of the last few years, uh, not necessarily because I wanted to switch to Windows, but because there are certain aspects of the Windows ecosystems that even draw in Linux users, things like being able to game in certain aspects where you can't do that on, on Linux. Like, there are still some games, despite the prevalence of Proton, that you can't play on Linux. You have to play them on Windows. And, you know, I was drawn to the Windows side of things for that reason. I, I've also, I also still support other people who use Windows, so oftentimes I have to go use Windows to help them out or provide technical support. So there are times where I find myself using Windows, and each time that I do... I find myself wondering how I was ever happy using Windows because, and it's not even, I, I know the Windows guys out there are all saying, well, that's because you're a Linux fanboy, which is true, of course. Uh, it's because you, you know, you've been brainwashed by the Free Software Foundation or something, I don't know. But the, the, it's not even that Windows is bad, which I do think Windows is bad, but the real reason why I say that is because Windows does things in such a different way than Linux does that I feel constrained, I feel boxed in, and I don't feel good about using Windows. And it's not because it's, you know, proprietary, it's because it's just the way that they do things are so completely different than what the way Linux does things. And I think there's no better example of this than the file system itself. Now, we, we're talking about file systems. You know Matt, he's got to nerd out about file systems in basically every video, but the point I'm trying to make here is that Windows does things in a certain way, like you have the C drive and the, you know, the D drive and the, you know, the E drive and all this stuff, and, and they have the way they, they store the user files and the program files and all this stuff, right? And we're not even talking about the deep down technology of like FAT32 or NTFS or any of those things like that. We could get into those if we wanted to really nerd out about it. But, you know, they, Windows has a certain way of storing and organizing files that is completely different than the way Linux does it, right? Everything on Linux is a file, and it is a way of organizing files that just makes so much more sense to me than the way they do it on Linux. So I find this such a compelling example because... It is such a different way of doing things, and whenever I switch back and forth, I find myself thinking, wow, why does Windows do this one thing that way when it makes so much more sense to do it the way that Linux does it? And it's obviously not the only example. Things like installing software, like everyone who's ever used Windows has seen a wizard before. Like, And, and the thing about the wizard installation paradigm is that it hasn't changed in literally 30 years. In fact, some of them look 30 years old. So if you've ever had to install like a printer driver even recently, a lot of those printer driver installation sessions or whatever look exactly like they did in Windows 98 using the exact same UI and everything, right? They haven't changed ever. It's nuts. Windows installs software in a completely different way. They have executables and stuff like that. And while Linux has binaries, they're not 
really the same thing. An executable still has to be installed. A binary can just be run, right? So there's there's differences there. And all of this comes down to is that the two ways of doing things that we have it, or that we're comparing here are completely or at least feel completely different when you switch between both of them. Now, obviously, there's a third platform out there that you got to talk about, and that's Mac. And Mac does things in a really weird way. If you've ever used a Mac before, their installing of applications is also not really installing, although they do have wizard installation on Mac. So if you've ever installed like Microsoft Office on Mac, there's actually, I, I got to remember, I haven't used Mac in probably 10 years, so maybe they've changed this. But it used to be you had to go through an install process for Office on Mac. Uh, but mostly installation of software on Mac is a drag and drop scenario, kind of like you would have to deal with with app image on Linux. So you take a pre-configured container of the pat of the application and drag it to your applications folder and that installs it. Right. That's what you do. So they do things in a little bit different way than Windows. So every all of these platforms do things in slightly different ways. And like I said at the beginning, it's not even that I've been ruined just for pr the proprietary uh, operating systems out there. I've also been ruined for other open source operating systems. So like BSD, I've tried BSD a little bit. I've been asked several times both on YouTube here and on my Discord server to try out certain flavors of BSD. And every time that I try, they do things in just a slightly different way than Linux. And there's different little pieces and stuff because they're obviously not the same thing. You know, BSD and Linux, not the same thing. So they're going to do things different ways. But I prefer the way Linux does things so much that it makes it so hard for me to switch back and forth between any other operating system. I just prefer Linux so much. And I don't know whether or not to be okay with this way of doing things, or I don't know whether or not to be okay with this state of affairs, I should say, or if I should feel sad that I can't go experience other operating systems and be okay with it, right? And obviously there's the whole proprietary stuff that we could talk about if we wanted to talk about how windows is proprietary garbage and tracks you left right and center obviously all that stuff is bad but just because that stuff is bad doesn't make windows automatically bad there's a lot of software out there that is good that is also privacy nightmares so we know that that exists just because something is proprietary doesn't automatically make it bad or at least that's my has always been my argument but in windows case it proprietary and bad and also I would argue so completely different than the way Linux does things that it makes it hard to switch back and forth. So back in the day and not even really all that long ago when people who use Linux would give advice to those people who are switching to Linux one of the things that they'd say is that if you can't let go of your Windows partition or your Windows install to dual boot right you'd dual boot on the same hard drive you'd switch back and forth and you'd only use Windows when you absolutely had to. You'd have that Windows partition there as kind of a fallback. For me personally, as I get further and further into using Linux, it becomes less and less of a thing for me to actually want to or be able to switch back to Windows, even for things that I might kind of have to do so. So the reason why all this came up was because I am a big Hearthstone player. I love playing Hearthstone. For those of you guys who don't know, Hearthstone is a uh, trading card game. Basically, it's a competitive card game. And I've been playing it basically since it came out. And I think I actually think it came out in 2017, to be honest with you. It's been around for quite a while. And I, you know, I've been playing it ever since. And, well, in on certain distributions, you can get Hearthstone to play inside of a bottle or inside Lutris or even inside Steam. On OpenSUSE, it is damn near impossible. And I have not actually been able to be successful in getting it to play. And I really want to play Hearthstone. So, what did I do? I decided I was going to install Windows just for this one purpose. And my experience in doing so led me to this pondering of how different Linux and Windows actually are and my response to that, those differences because I find myself more and more, like I said, ruined by Linux. Linux, I mean, it sounds, it sounds weird to put it that way, but Linux is, in my opinion, just so far superior to everything else, whether it's Mac, Windows, BSD. It's just so good. And I when I say that, you guys got to remember, it's a opinion, okay? So this is just me, right? Also, it's very personal, right? So Linux is perfect in the way it does things for me. And 
one of, I think one of the hardest things that a Linux YouTuber or uh, someone who is, is an evangelist for open source software or whatever position you find yourself in, if, you, if you're someone who tries to get other people to use Linux and open source software, I think one of the hardest things we have to do is realize that our workflow and things that work for us and things that we consider damn near perfect aren't that way for other people. So every time I encounter a Windows person, the first instinct I have is to mock them. <laughs> now, uh, maybe this says something about my personality. It's entirely possible that it does. But every time I actually encounter a Windows person, which is pretty often given the fact that Windows is very popular, I do have that first instinct to mock them. Like, <laughs> you use Windows. <laughs> And usually in this situation, it's not that I'm talking to a person who only uses Windows. Usually it's people who use Linux the vast majority of the time, but can't ditch Windows for whatever reason, right? And usually I have to quell my instinct to be not kind to those people. Like, how dare you, or not how, not really how dare you, but how can you possibly want Windows anywhere near your perfect Linux installation? But I, I it, it's come to a situation where I've started to think that we have to empathize with people who do have to still use Linux, just like I still have to use Google for work, right? Uh, I don't want to use Google. It's obviously stealing and eating all of my data, and I'm never going to be private ever again because they know literally everything about me. That's absolutely true, but I still have to use it. There are people out there in the same situation with Windows, and I have to, I have to, and we kind of have to just at least somewhat empathize with these people and maybe I mean, it feels condescending to say feel sorry for them because I, you know, you shouldn't, I mean, it's, it's an operating system, you don't have to feel sorry for them, but it does, it is kind of that situation where I, you know, I kind of feel sorry if you're one of those people who really want to switch to Linux, but you can't because you can't, you, there's something you have to use Windows for, um, or maybe you have to use Windows for work or whatever situation. Like I do feel sorry for you, uh, but also I understand that those situations exist and I'm not going to be an asshole about it. Just use Linux as much as you can. But it goes back to, just to make this all about me again, and, and uh, continue my rambling on, because I have only been going on for about 20 minutes and literally said zero things of substance. <laughs> I find myself unable to switch back and forth, and I suppose there's a part of me that's just a tad bit jealous of those who can switch back and forth between the platforms and be happy about it. I, it's not as if I can't do that. I just can't be happy about it because because of the differences I talked about earlier, because of the proprietary nature of Windows and all that stuff. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm feeling a little sorry for myself because I, I couldn't stick around in Windows to actually play Hearthstone for very long because, of course, it had to update three times during the time I was using it. And it reminded me why I use Linux every single day. So uh, that is a long, rambly video. If you made it all the way to the end, I applaud you, uh, and I also thank you so very much. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. If you want to check out the merch store, that's available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find t-shirts and hoodies and cups, and there's a brand new desk mat there that's really, really freaking cool. And uh, I highly suggest you can head on over there and check those out if you want to help support the channel and get some cool merch in exchange. Also, merch is probably the most YouTube word ever. So... Thanks, everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you very much for your support. Also, for those of you who have joined on a page on Patreon, on YouTube, on, on Ko-fi in the last, say, week and a half or so, I know that this end screen credits and the websites have not been updated. Uh, I'm working on a new system, and it's taking me longer than I thought it would. So uh, I will get that updated here in the next couple days. I promise. I promise. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.